All right. So it looks like they are waiting to start right now. Um, and uh, the bag a shake and then handing it off to Eric, who's going to go first. So we are going to get underway here. So I don't really know stylistically. Actually, Lori is a bit of a moon explorer, right? As a player, <laughs> as as they say, yes. Um, I think she is mostly pretty sound, um, but perhaps sort of a gambling type. If her, you know, rack warrants it, or if the game situation warrants it, she's not afraid to take a take a big gamble. Um, so we see Eric going first, and he has a pretty clear-cut play of Joist, if he were to see it, which we know he w is very likely to, and so, there it is. Okay, you could do Joist. You could also just do Jot there, I think. Both seem somewhat reasonable. Mm. I mean, right. I, I, would, I would play Joist pretty quick. Um, just the extra 20 points is really good, and I don't think the fist leave is particularly great. I think it's closer than a lot of people realize. Also, waiting for the banjoist uh, hook right now. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, someone once said, um, yeah, there are all these cool extensions from five letter words to eight letter words. Like, Joist makes banjoist. Wow, and... that's, that's Scrabble logic right there. Um, unfortunately for Eric, he's about to get hit with a huge comeback of wedgiest, and she and Lori has seen it nearly instantly so if he played jot you know it would have been fewer points just saying that's true it would have been about the same amount fewer points and his leave might be slightly better so perhaps it would have worked out slightly better in that case um but um after his next play it's going to be pretty close to an even game so he shouldn't worry that much um, I can see right off the bat he has Defiant double double, so maybe there's something better. Very than nice play, yeah. Defiant's really good. Um, he could keep the AN for Banjoist though. No. Um, I oh, think someone... so. I earlier in my Scrabble career, I would definitely overcompensate, and I still, to a certain extent, I. I make a lot of mistakes involved with like saving letters for extensions like that when I shouldn't. So certainly if I am either of these players, I'm probably only going to start thinking about Banjoist if I get a B. Um, I, until then, I'm, I'm not likely to even think about it. Uh, I think that's right. Um, and as someone pointed down the chat that if, uh, Eric did shots. It would have just been wedgies and shots. So, mm. uh, yeah, the, the point difference isn't as large as uh, I initially thought. Yeah, but again, that's not proof of a play being better or worse that it works out. You know, in a one one a uh, one ply sim or so not one ply one iteration iteration simulation. Yeah, that is not particularly meaningful. And for those who don't know what we're talking about with simulation or iterations, this is uh, Quackle, uh, one of the main Scrabble AIs uh, where experts and other players analyze their games. Um, you can simulate a turn, right? So you can actually look a few turns out um, what the situation would sort of look like on average by randomly populating your opponent's rack and your next rack. Um, and so... Many players like to simulate their turns to sort of get a sense of, of uh, situations does a specific play lead to eventually. That's a pretty, pretty good analysis of Quackle, in my opinion. All right, we see Deify, which if Defiant didn't exist, that would be a pretty strong play. Um, it is a bit of a miss compared to a 44 point play being on the board. But if you're, it's pretty underrated. If you're going to make an error or miss a word, the best way to do it is by playing a play that's still pretty decent on its own merits, which Deify, like I said, would be perfectly fine if not for Defiant being available. So it's not a huge blunder, but um, I think it's definitely a miss. Um, he did seem to draw a retuner, so that's going to be helpful. And it looks like Lori has instantly exchanged her two U's and two V's. 
which was yeah, a very, not the most fun draw post bingo very poor, for her. Yeah, very poor draw. I'm not sure if, if she were to have played. I mean, what she would have, what would she have played like QV or something? I don't even know. A QV would have probably been a I mean, reasonable it, player. Gov maybe. Um, yeah, Gov. disgusting. Also, yeah, I think exchanging is perfectly warranted, and Eric clearly has seen his bingo. And if uh, Ratoon or does or- Ordinance does not fit from there, actually, never mind. Um, Crannied. Um, so it looks like I don't think Lori's going to have a bingo, but she's certainly close to it, or she can score a lot of points playing on top of Ratooner. Yeah, um, so you're saying like with Caned or something like that? Yeah, right. Something in that spot. Yeah, yeah Caned. Caned. Pretty good, thirty-seven points. Ooh, look at this draw for Eric. Not so good. So Eric has. You can see the scores are back up in the center part of your screen. Eric has a small lead, but Laurie should, unless she opts to. So this is going to be interesting. Um, some people stylistically with letters like this would be drawn to play a very low number of letters. I think mathematically it's definitely correct to play for 37 points and play caned, but some people would be tempted just to play shorter and keep that nice rack leave intact. So let's see what she elects to do. What would you do here, Morris? I would pretty much, I think, play Kane very quickly. The alternatives, right? Just, I mean, do you feel like you need to get rid of so badly that it's worth sacrificing 20 plus points? Probably none specifically here. Everything's sort of decent, nothing, cr- no crazily good leave. So, yeah, and Lori elects to play Kane as well. She um, has made the Morris approved move. Which is and the will approved sign. move. Sometimes yeah. the Morris approved move is difficult to come up with, but that's true. Um, she's made it here, and uh, Eric should be looking to use up as many of those vowels as he can, or maybe it's his turn to exchange. Um, and and it's an interesting exchange to do here. What? If you were to exchange your will, what letters would you keep? Really good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I might dump them all. I'm not sure yeah. that I'm not sure that keeping just an L or IL is particularly worth it. It's kind was, of interesting was, to keep maybe bl just because there's good synergy there and the b is kind of decent on this board between the nab spot up with for tuner and also by with deify there should be some places to play words with b in it um and banjoist <laughs> oh of course yeah oh if you're yeah. gonna exchange oh yeah forgot about banjoist so maybe bl is the way to go just because of all that stuff a BL or BIL, I think, could even be reasonable if you wanted to keep a vowel with it as well. Yeah, but, that would be a very tricky exchange. I, I can't really fault him for doing an exchange seven just because you that's more chances to get the blank, the other blank or the two S's, but very interesting. Maybe it's actually correct to keep the B there uh, for all those reasons. Yeah, so it, it will be interesting to sort of see what comes out of this. But yeah, I think the, exchanging seven is perfectly fine there. Uh, but it's definitely something that uh, is worth thinking about given the board. The B is actually one of the better tiles on this board somehow. Yeah, surprisingly. So, so it seems yeah. like um, with the exception of the two bingos one per player there have been a lot of tough racks that they're dealing with in the early going um agreed and uh another one for Lori as she plays mary which seems fine she could have played perry in that same spot if she wanted to i don't i really prefer sure. playing mary there because the p and the r have some nice synergy 
Yeah, uh, it does look a little bit better. Um, yeah, I can get behind that. So it seems fine. Now Eric has to deal with a Z and an X. So vexed off of the E in Mary could definitely be a possibility here. That looks great. Vex scores quite well. If you're going to use one of the two power tiles to get a lot of points now, the X would be the one to use just because the Z is certainly a better tile than the X in a vacuum. Um, and just to for for those that are saying what why you know why is that well it scores two more points there are more bingos with a z by far than bingos with an x and um it's just a little bit more flexible between scoring and bingoing than the x which is nearly exclusively a scoring tile so love the idea of playing vexed i have every confidence that that's what's coming down here yeah i mean I'm wondering, is he considering anything else? He's considering like Veg in the top corner like as well and R, but that just seems like it doesn't even score enough to. Yeah, maybe briefly, and then he's correctly going with this nice play, which has the benefit of, at the very least, he'll play G's next turn through the E. He's just created for a decent score. So um, if it doesn't get blocked, of course. But and even Vex if also. Not that, it should be fine to score with the Z. Sorry, Morris. Uh, you know, it's okay. Vexed also uh, creates G's now as a play. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what Laurie will have in that spot. Maybe just peer? I don't know. P-I-E-R. That would block... Um, maybe some pierogi word for those that are into that cuisine. Um. There are approximately 7,000 ways to spell pierogi in the dictionary. Um, that's probably a low estimate. <laughs> yeah, pierogi is one of those words. We have a few like that. Genie is another one that has a ton of ways to spell it. Ganef, like that, that seem to have Galabia. Can't forget oh, that one. One of the yeah. greats. Hallo. Yeah. So there's there's a lot that uh, just. Okay. So down so down words. goes down goes pouring, which is kind of a very close variation of pierogi. I would think maybe. NR is just slightly better in a vacuum than IR. Just my just just my random like spider sense of leave values that isn't really informed by actual stats, but um I think yeah, it's an okay play. Leaves that um I think NR on average is better, but it will also depend on the vowels and consonants left in the game, right? If you have a game with not that many vowels left in the bag than nr in this case it seems like it's fairly evenly distributed so i think i'd probably lean towards pierogi as well for eric now there's a few options he is zoia through the for a bunch of points um yeah and bryn bowen pointing out hog Hello, Heidi. <laughs> um, Hog has the virtue of keeping the Z and not oh. putting the Z, the Z in the triple lane like Zoia, but it scores a few fewer points. Which I Hog? Guess. Do you do Hog with one G setting up the second G? Oh. Or do you just play That's Hog? That's interesting. With those Gs? That's interesting. Wow. Just regular Hog because then your eventual, if you get a D or an R or any of the other. Excuse me, gaze words. You're scoring a boatload of points. Whereas if you put the G in the triple lane, it's almost certainly getting blocked, and you'll never get them. Wow, very. So you think you would consider hog with one G here, Morris? I would oh, definitely could, consider it. It's, that uh, could be a huge and, upside play. I guess it's sort of like score dependent. 
I don't think he needs to gamble like that. If he were at a little a little bit of a deficit, maybe I would think about it. But he's uh, which is a perfectly good play. It just would have been more exciting well, to see. Well, I, I don't think G's. Played. I don't think G's is nearly as good as even just Hog with two G's. Um, just just because his leave of A G H O is so inflexible compared to the lo- the lovely leave of Z E A. I mean, that's just going to work out really well for you a lot of the time. Keeping that. I don't know. In this situation, I mean, if you're looking at this board now. There, it's getting to be pretty closed in a lot of ways. Um, and that's if fair. you're up by 46 points in this situation, this that's the kind of play that isn't necessarily the most flashy or sexy play, but it will it gets the job done a lot of the time. And it puts Lori in a really tough position to think about. She's down by 46. If she doesn't have an obvious bingo, thinking about how can I create anything here to give myself a fighting chance well speaking personally i'm trying to make as many sexy plays as i can okay however i can i'm just kidding um i totally get what you're saying it definitely leads to a nice closed board for him to protect his lead on and that's nothing has changed between eric's last move and laurie's play of chi which was pretty much forced on her part um so eric is gonna maybe continue to lock this board down however he can how would you what would you look to do here to keep up your lockdown morris if you Um, could yeah that's a good question so vig off of that chi spot that Lori created actually looks pretty decent right now yeah Um, right it doesn't really add anything that's just like a you know somewhat of a normal equity play, and it also Vega. yeah Vega induces Lori to play down from the V if she wants points, which continues to not open the board any further. So that's still even though it's not blocking like retuners or joists or anything like that, it still continues the theme of locking the board down pretty pretty solidly. So Vigo does go down sort of for a lot of the reasons we said. I mean, the easy equity play and also it doesn't give back anything really. So he slaps yeah, it down pretty quickly. It happens to be good positionally as well. Isn't that nice when it works out that way? Um, perhaps more interesting is what should Lori do here to kind of wrench things open because her deficit is kind of worsened now to the point where she was kind of down tempo and now it's worsened to where she's really down a small bingo. So So what to do? Glob seems somewhat reasonable off the G and G's, um, right? Scores a bit sort of bingo-y letters and gives a bingo lane. It's not necessarily the easiest bingo lane to hit but it gives an option for the future at least yeah i think that looks again it's i don't see any other play that looks like it's remotely close on points and leave on equity um it would be nice to open a little bit more but i think she's probably going to play something in that spot okay also do we have any nola's there are two things I forgot. Nola words were in play there, and Banjoist would have played if Vexed wasn't there. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, I kind of like, uh, I put the Nola word thing on ice for a bit. Maybe we'll revisit that on the final day, just because we're getting our sea legs under us just for the first four games. Um, yeah, it looks like Glob may be a little better, but it looks like, well, Lori's drawn nicely, but I'm not sure that she'll have any ways to play those letters eric has fashion but yeah no spot to play fashion eric has fashion and he also has the letters fashion on his rack yeah everyone loves a good gray hoodie this weekend bill belichick will rock one probably i'm wearing one right now as we speak in fact just to answer that question, what are you wearing? I'm sure most of the viewers have already thought that. Uh, oh, I, I thought for a second fashion played off of Wedgius, but essay is not a word. So never mind. 
Ish could be an interesting option off of Wedgiest, making F, S, I, and Joists. Morris, why should Eric be fishing? He's up by 40 points. Cringe. Just kidding. I get it. Um, yeah, fish looks great. It scores really well. Um, it simultaneously, if Eric is worried that Lori has an S bingo, um, blocking both retuners and joists in one go, and the only trade off would be allowing vowel starting sevens in return. That seems like it's a pretty good trade-off to make for 36 points to me. Yeah, we'll sort of see. It's a lot of points. And the other thing about the that play fish, it gives a lane that has to be seven letters starting with a vowel. That lane will go into the triple lane also. So it's one of those things where it offers low point bingos with the potential high point response plays. Um, Bryn points out just the simple Ho B14, which also has some things to commend it. It scores decently. It keeps a nice, um, flexible leave that does contain an S. Um, so that wouldn't, I wouldn't consider that to be a mistake necessarily. And also I want to shout out the play of Naif's, the insertion play, um, between the end of pouring and the first S of joints. You could play Naif's for 28. Ooh, that's very lovely. Um, blocking a couple lines, but not doing much about the S hooks, which really, again, they aren't that big of a threat. There's only one more S to come. Um, so we like this play. We like the play of fish. Um, I mean, it's it's a play that paper. It's also the play that I could see if I'm <laughs> from here. Flory does hit that bingo. Yeah. So I roll what out of control. Could... Right. What could happen from here is not even just a bingo, but just a sufficiently long play off of the H is going to open up the board hugely, right? Just even if she were to just play like Obeli, O-B-E-L-I, that's going to be, well, You, I guess you wouldn't prefer that. It would be nice to have something that hooked. Um, but any reasonable play in that spot is going to create more threats than Eric will be able to block without a really good parallel play. Um, but that's not that big of a concern, I don't think. He should usually be able to handle moves like that. What should she play here, though? It's kind of tricky. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, she could play... I kind of don't want to do it, but off of grab, she could just play B.O., I mean, if she wants to keep all of her good bingo letters, but that kind of you're really closes one of her only lanes. Yeah, you're really committing to drawing pretty much a seven starting with a vowel and hoping that Eric doesn't have any way to block that. Like something with a, I don't know, if you drew the Y, that could be devastating. Any fishy play that doesn't open much of the board would just destroy the board. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing much better than that. Volt okay, or so, something? So here's the type of play that I was just talking about. Like OB here. OB looks good. Yeah, I it's like not that the a lot. Be- it's not the best equity play, but how is Eric going to close this in a conclusive way? It's not easy to do. It isn't, no. Fish is the kind of play that looks really nice after one turn. But three turns later, in some situations, you're like, man, why in the world did I play fish there? Plenty of times before. Um, and I'm not sure in this situation if I would have passed up fish because it is a really nice looking play in a lot of ways. Yeah, he's still, I mean, he's still in the driver's seat. But wow, Lori just drew to her leave of inlet. She just drew Y blank, which is just uh, she, she She kept Lent. She drew an I as oh, well. Oh, sorry, sorry. G- good point. Yeah, I was thinking about if she was playing bow, her leave would be inlet. So she drew I Y blank, which is really good. Um, and some people were saying bad. that Obli may be better for board opening. Uh, keep in mind, OB gives obit as well. Yeah. So when I mentioned Obli, I was thinking that one of the well, it does take an E hook. Uh, sorry, rather an A hook, Obelia. I forgot about that in the moment. Right. So that's a decent argument that maybe that 
leads to really more openings than Eric can close. Um, but yeah, now he's going to be in a little trouble because, well, I mean, not that much trouble from his perspective. He's got, he's got a bunch of places that he can play two of his vowels and leave a really, really nice bingo leave on a board. That's now got a lot of bingo opportunities. He might not like that because he has a lead, but he does like it because his tiles dictate that he should. So if he just plays Ova and Jar, leaving Leighton, that's going to be that's going to lead to a bingo for him a ton of the time. Um, so it might be okay to just. I mean, I know you have a lead, and you don't want to just leave the good bingo lanes completely wide open, but. I wouldn't mind um, seeing him just dump two vowels and ensure that if Lori does bingo, which she will, and there's no way he can stop him between stop her rather between binately and other spots. Um, he's almost sure to have a, re a rebuttal, but instead he goes with defense, which is certainly warranted as well. What do you think about this move, Morris? I sort of agree with your analysis. It's one of these things where. Um, you have to think in terms of worst case scenarios, right? Once you start to be up 50, 60 points, you have to start thinking about the bingo. Where does that leave me? And so for that reason, I think Ova, really solid play that really good situation, even if she has sort of the worst case scenarios that you don't want to see. Well, Lori, being Lori, she is quickly found by Nately, and that was easily her best option. I think she had Tinsley also through the L of Tonal. Um, but now, after all that, Lori is going to be up by a handful of points, and basically, if she gets a good enough draw, um, she could... Uh, I mean, Eric did just draw the case S, so... Last, so, yeah. Tough. I'm not, I'm not seeing... And there's and he has two of the last three A's for a atonal now, which could yeah. matter. He held one and drew the other. So um, it'll be interesting to see what he plays. There's a, I mean. Close game now. It's a three-point game. I didn't realize. So uh, total close, actually yeah. does score a lot of points. I will say that. I didn't realize. I didn't consider that when I initially said I liked Ova. But Tonal does they score. Don't... It scores 24, but Ova scored 20, so it's not... I don't know if the, the extra four points is worth the difference between AE versus Leighton as your leave, but... Um, well, if, you, if you're trying to block double-doubles, right, that, tr that sort of thing, and just the most likely bingos in general, that true. could be... No, worth, I, I, right? it's, I hear you. I, I, I see. Um, but... I think that I, Quackle would probably say Ova, um, but Quackle probably also isn't taking into account that um, after Ovi, Lori's leave is definitely better than random. So um, however you want to adjust the stem results based on your read on how strong she is, then Tonal could be much better than Quackle thinks. So for Lori now, let's turn to her. Does she do Holt here off of the A in Tonal? Well, it's still Eric. It, Eric's is Eric. It's Eric. Oh, on right, turn, right. I think. Right. So, <laughs> so he. Yes, you are exactly right. If he wants to cash a Tonal, I think he only has a Muse. Um, that's a little bit scary, just because you really are putting it up to luck that she's not going to hit that E or S. You're putting really nice floaters out in the open. Um, so yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah. there are two A's unseen. And if, if Eric were to play something short, um, and try to groom his leave for a bingo and Lori were to hit the atonal hook with something particularly heavy, then Eric would potentially be in the situation that he needed a bingo to, win the game, which is kind of tough. Whereas after Amuse, it's Lori that needs the bingo. 
So I mean, what sort of big plays are out there at the atonal spot? I see ached, A C H E D seems pretty good. But how really many points that is that? Much. I mean, the really the the scariest letter that's out there is probably the K. So any letter, anything with A K, like Aquila, Akeen, Aki, A C K E E, any play like that would be particularly damaging. Um, well, Eric plays Vow, which I think looks really good here. Sort of the logic fine. you were saying of Ova last turn. And he drew emulates through the L of Tonal. So if Very that doesn't nice. get blocked, he's going to get that down, which I think he won't because Lori's good plays are in that spot parallel to Tonal. Um, I think that's right. And those plays are going to put her up a decent amount. So if she were to continue to put scoring pressure on Eric, it might force him into a situation where he has to bingo, um, which would be such a reversal given that he's been up for much of the game after really um, vexed pretty much. Yeah. Um, I think another thing is Lori should infer that Eric has an A here. Eight tonal spots pretty juicy. If you're playing Val like that, you should infer an A and probably other good bingo letters. So right, A T E S. Her Ooh, situation, and I'd probably infer a lot of that. That is a curveball. She's just played Pe there, um, which doesn't block emulates. emulates. Yeah, so Eric is almost a sure bet to see that and play it. I wonder what. What can we kind of reverse engineer her reasoning for doing that? I mean, there's already an S hook on the board with hots, so playing Holp and making another one isn't really a difference maker. I wonder why. I wonder what she was thinking. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, yep, emulates. Um, so, and fairly quickly. Um, yeah, that's that's an interesting one. Yeah, right away. Um, well, um, perhaps the only saving grace for Lori is that her play still puts her up um, a decent amount. Eric's going to bingo, but it's going to put an S in the triple lane. So she'll get maybe one more chance to create a spot for herself to um, get something good. I mean, she could... Th these letters look kind of decent with the W up top. I don't think there's any, I don't think any of the good letters that you would want to hit are still in the pool, like Woodland or something like that. But um, those letters kind of look or, decent or, to me with the W. Or workload. <laughs> yeah, workload. Um, those letters aren't available. We'll just have to look and see if any of those letters you could potentially fish and hit the W. Um, but there's, you can see the tile pool in that little sliver right near our names, which is uh, our names are Will Anderson and Morris Greenberg. Um, there's only two in the bag, so it's going to be quite difficult for her to fish, and she definitely needs to. I don't think she'll, she can't score her way back. Yeah, so this is interesting. Let's try to. Yeah, what could she hit? Can anybody see anything? And so I, I think mean, the definitely good there's stuff that you can hit to the S and the E of emulates, but I think you need a fish that has something beyond that because Eric is definitely going to block it and he has a C to block it um, pretty conclusively. Anything to the S with his C, like culettes or something, um, that'll get the job done. And this is also just it, the one saving grace here is it's. Definitely, if she has a plan for hitting a bingo, Eric can outrun, right? It's less than he's less than a bingo up right now. So a bingo should win for Lori. So that significantly simplifies the problem for her. Uh, she doesn't need to think about if it's a high enough score bingo. Ooh, okay. Bingo. So as a classics major, I can tell you this word is a sticky S. There, this is not a valid word. K lens is um, uh, the first day of the month in the Roman calendar. So it needs that S. There is no Kaland. But I think Eric has every incentive to just let it sit because he's probably going to win every time. Um, 
he's just going to play claw and uh, to the triple uh, parallel to Kaland, and that's the game. Whereas if he were to challenge and lose that, well, even even then, he's probably still going to win because Laurie has OOUI. So um, this game is looking like it's going to go to Eric Kahanen. And uh, fall game. I mean, there were a few interesting turns. Um, Peh is the one sort of interested in. Yeah, in- I would have loved to see how the game unfolded after Holp parallel to Tonal. Um, that would have been quite interesting. But, yeah, but otherwise, I think Lori's plays we thought were really, really good overall. It would have been interesting in seeing Hog from Eric, either with 1G or 2Gs instead of Gs. Um, and also Defiant was a nice play, Will pointed out, instead of Deify. But... And I think Tonal was a good play, but there were definitely a lot of different ways you could have gone on that turn that would have affected the game very differently. So some definitely um, interesting calls. Yeah, I'd say Lori's. I guess grab versus glob. That's not a really big deal. Um, Obi was probably her most interesting play, just positionally. Yeah, very, very interesting. That and, and Pe. And then, and then Pe was, I think I'm closer to thinking that that's just an outright mistake, or maybe she missed Hope. Um, I don't know right now, though. So, I mean, Eric looks like he's taken his time. He's three and a half ish minutes. So, yeah. Just, just probably making sure he finds, you know, the right sort of end game sequence. I have to yeah. imagine that something like, I mean, now now he's got the D down low to play through. He can play Wade or something, um, leaving Colt and Eft. Um, Colt and Eft is very nice. Yeah. Um, I think Claw though looks actually. Are there multiple outs for after? So he plays Claw, keeping Ute. That definitely goes above Emulates. Do you see a second out spot for him, though? Uh, right off the bat. That might be the only... Otherwise, Claw looks great, but it might be possible that Lurie just blocks the spot. I don't know. We'll see. see yeah it's actually not i think she can only block with what like she can't make she can't block with two letters right now okay so maybe blocking it just lets eric play sue down low with to the triple leaving his t and that works out worse for her because he she can't go out on her next move so she probably should just let him have ute um yeah, tricky. Unfortunately, it's very hard for most mere mortals in situations like this to give your full effort in figuring out the perfect end game. It's fun to do and it's good practice, but um, pragmatically, you need every bit of energy you can get. And plus, they're in New Orleans. So perhaps you need more energy than usual if you're looking to go out and get a little tipsy tonight. Which the start time for these, I think uh, New Orleans has a pretty pronounced um, late start time as these multi days go, starting at 10 p- 10 a.m. local time. Um, that's pretty late, so I think that's done with the city in mind. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely interesting when uh, I, since I'm on the East Coast and I think Will is too when they say. Yeah, can you guys do the morning games? And you look, and it ends at 3 p.m. <laughs> yeah, starting at 11 a.m. Um. So, but yeah, New Orleans, it's a fun tournament, for sure. Uh, if, you're, if you haven't gone before uh, to either the city or the tournament, uh, down there at some point to try it out. Lots of players there, lots of good food, you know, just a great time overall. 
looks like Eric's clock is actually winding down. He's approaching a minute. Uh, maybe does he not see you? Maybe hmm. in that spot. Maybe not. That's kind of odd. Not that it matters much, but yeah, definitely better for him to just. Maybe Lori doesn't have an out. Is that possible? That's probably what it is. <laughs> out with oi right now oh very clever if that's really true how so end game skills right now uh that's impressive concentration right there no, if, he, if that no, is no 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 he just made one she can play oi and out now <laughs> <laughs> oops right. so maybe <laughs> maybe he thought that she didn't, but he just made one. Yeah. Again, doesn't matter. Doesn't change nothing but a couple spread. I think he I think that's what his thought process was, but he just didn't see he was making a new one. Um if not, yeah, he's chuckling, I think. I and both really players like are chuckling. Good sportsmanship. We know both these players are very friendly. No, nobody's, you know, pouting too much. And plus it's too early to pout and you're in New Orleans, so you could just go get drunk. Um, and, and on that note, at three p.m., I think that's what we're gonna. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, we, we have both been known as teetotalers uh, in our days as Scrabble players, so perhaps that's why we do so well in the New Orleans space tournaments, Morris. That's true. That's true. Um. So, but we're yeah, gonna anyway. be. Yeah, go ahead. We're going to be breaking for lunch, I think, now. Um, we apologize again for some of the shaky technical stuff on our end earlier, but I think we're up and running now, and there's going to be some great CSW games this afternoon. You guys can see it's going to be different commentators, but Will and I will be back for the morning sessions tomorrow and Monday. And it's been a pleasure getting this stream started with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it, all the technical stuff seems to be completely ironed out. So be uh, get excited for 16 more games. It's going to alternate between Collins. Um, the Collins commentators, I believe, are um, Sam Rosen and Chris Hawkins, who will be coming at you after lunch. Um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, there are going to be a couple different commentary teams uh, in the afternoons, but we will always be with you in the mornings, um, pending a couple of games on Monday with Morris potentially, but otherwise, um, check back with us tomorrow morning. If you want more Will and Morris commentary, but there's going to be great games coming at you this afternoon. So on that note, have a nice lunch, everybody, and, um, stay tuned for some Collins action this afternoon.